Back when I used to work at Starbucks, the only drink I would tell people to get is their cold brew because, well, it slaps. But there's a new drink in town, the brown sugar shaken espresso. This drink, well, slaps hard. And contrary to the super long, ridiculous, God, I hate that name, terribly thought out name of brown sugar, oat milk shaken espresso, the drink is actually pretty easy to make. But we're not here just to make the drink, we're here to make the drink better at home. So let's get into it. The brown sugar shaken espresso is actually super easy to make. There's only like five ingredients. It's espresso, brown sugar, cinnamon, ice, and milk. Which means you really have to focus on each one of the ingredients in order to really elevate it. There are so many different options now for oat milks, but my tried and true, the one that tastes the best, is Chobani Original Oat. Now for me personally, I'm not gonna use light brown sugar. I actually want dark brown sugar. I think it'll taste better. Give it a more rich, complex flavor. I'm currently at Starbucks waiting in line, so story time. I posted a video on TikTok a couple of days ago, got like 25 million views. It was a point of view style video of me just making my morning coffee. And a lot of the comments was along the lines of, if I drove to Starbucks, got my coffee and came back, I would have my coffee before you were even done making yours. And it's just so funny because I've been waiting in line for 20 minutes and my video was only four minutes long. So who's laughing now? I had to cut this part out because I ended up laughing and it was really embarrassing, but anyways, let's go drink this. As expected. It's not bad, but when I drink it, I get oatmeal raisin. When, frankly, I want oatmeal chocolate chunk. I want like richness. I want chocolatiness from the espresso notes to complement the cinnamon and the brown sugar. And that's exactly what we're gonna make. So let's get into making the brown sugar shaken espresso. But better. Before we get into the nitty gritty of it, I have to mention this one thing. You guys, the coffee beans that you use matter the most out of anything in this entire process. So if you take anything out of this video, it's to use good quality coffee beans that are fresh. Fresh. Now that that part's out of the way, I feel more comfortable getting into the nitty gritty. So we're gonna weigh out 18 grams of coffee because this is the standard dose for a double shot of espresso. And I see this little metal piece in there. Don't worry, I got that out. That's from the grinder. I don't know what that is. No, I'm not spraying fragrance on the coffee beans or cologne, that's just water. And when the coffee beans go through the grinder, it causes static electricity and the water essentially minimizes that. The next step in the equation is puck prep. And this is really just everything that we do to minimize any channeling or clumps within that puck. You see, water's lazy and it wants to go in the path of least resistance and those clumps are the path of least resistance. Now, before we pull our shot of espresso, I like to get the shaker cup ready for action. So I'm gonna put two tablespoons of dark brown sugar, about a teaspoon or so of Vietnamese cinnamon because it's the best cinnamon for this drink, and then a small sprinkle of cinnamon bun Osmo salt, just for something a little extra. Look at that beautiful shot of espresso. Now I opted to use my espresso machine, but I'm gonna teach you how you can make this same exact drink using an AeroPress, that's $40. The AeroPress consists of three main compartments. The first compartment is the filter, the second compartment holds the coffee and the water, and the third compartment is the plunger. For a piece of coffee equipment that's $35 to $40, depending on where you buy it, this thing makes a damn good cup of coffee. For ratios, 18 grams of coffee goes into the grinder and ground on level two of my fellow Opus. Water gets preheated to 204 degrees, coffee goes in, water goes in, and now we sit and wait for two minutes. This is unfortunately where you have to be a little patient. In the filter goes two paper filters and we're gonna pre-soak those. Filter goes onto the AeroPress. We flip it over with a cup on the other side. That way, no coffee gets on your counter. We don't want that. Now with even constant force, we're gonna press down on the top plunger of the AeroPress and now you're left with this beautiful espresso adjacent coffee. And if you're into that ASMR satisfying content, you're left with this beautiful puck. Oh yeah, there it goes. Come on, there it goes, boom. Now we can finish our mixture. In the shaker cup goes the espresso, give it a nice little mix, add your ice, and then shake it aggressively. Now the aggressive shaking is what gets you this nice, beautiful layer of foam. Just top it off with your milk and you're all set to go. So we have my brown sugar oat milk shaken espresso and we have Starbucks brown sugar oat milk shaken espresso. We're gonna try them both, give them a rating, and see which one is genuinely better. First, off the bat, 
you can see that mine has the foam still on top of the drink. Let's start with Starbucks. Yeah, exactly. It's as expected. Like I was saying before, when I drink that one, it's like drinking an oatmeal raisin cookie because they use a blonde roast. It is a little more florally or citrusy than their normal espresso roast that traditionally tastes like bitter or burnt. Even though the blonde roast, in my opinion, still does taste a little like bitter, it is generally gonna be more bright and florally than a dark roast. For the espresso that I used, it's a medium roast with hints of chocolate and stone fruit. And I think with the cinnamon and the dark brown sugar, it's gonna give it a nice complex flavor that what I'm, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Like I said earlier, I'm looking for a oatmeal chocolate chunk cookie when I drink a shaken espresso with oat milk. Right off the bat, you can taste the difference in the espresso. The salt definitely helps bring out more of the cinnamon flavors and even the brown sugar. The brown sugar being so dark, it just kind of warms up the drink even though it's iced. I'm gonna say that we won this one without hands down. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this style of video and let me know if I should make more in the comments below. Make sure that you like, subscribe, share it, it all helps. YouTube doesn't like my long videos for some reason, Maybe it's because I suck at it. Anyways, peace out, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.